Hi, my name is Mark. I'm a monetary economist. And in this video, what I want to talk about is Western companies, companies that you know, brand name companies that are still doing business and raking in the cash in Russia. As you know, I believe in something called conscious or ethical capitalism. And I believe, you know, the founder of Whole Foods Market, I believe his name is John McKay, he wrote a book about this. But it's really just an echo of what Adam Smith in 1776 said. He said that people are acting on their own enlightened self-interest. They're not, a lot of people today confuse capitalism with, you know, anything goes. Adam Smith was a moral philosopher. His whole life he tried to find a way to improve human condition. He certainly was not recommending the libertine uh, anything goes capitalism that some people on the extreme suggest. He, he always emphasized as a classical philosopher value creation and doing good for humanity by pursuing and self-actualizing efforts like in Maslow's hierarchy of needs when everybody's doing the thing that they want to do in this life. That's how we all contribute. So there are companies that are on the bad list, and they're really bad because when they do business in Russia, they are paying taxes, employing people, making that country's engine towards the geopolitical event in Ukraine continue to roll forward. Besides that, it's just a symbolic gesture. And these are companies that I personally am not going to shop at, and I don't recommend you either. Companies like Nestle's, they never had a problem before. Yeah, of course. They, they were selling, pawning these baby formulas all over the world that had long-term impact on children. Companies like Volkswagen. Volkswagen, you know, again, this is all fluid situation, so we don't know when you're watching this if they've withdrawn investment, they're trying to withdraw investment, or they're still going like crazy. Volkswagen, I heard, was... And maybe they're not now, but I hear a lot of Volkswagen cars are going to Uzbekistan and it's like business as usual. What about companies like Procter & Gamble? It's like a household name. From my understanding, they're still doing business. Maybe it's not business as normal. And Unilever, Avon Products, you know, they're basically saying, well, we don't want to lose market share and they'll just take over the brand. Who cares? Who cares about Russia? This is a major geopolitical event, a genocide. Do you want to be paying taxes to support that? And let's be honest, okay? Procter & Gamble, do they make any of these companies I'm going to be mentioning, whether it be Philip Morris, Mars Bars, Procter & Gamble, do they make anything of value? Okay, I take a, a toothpaste tube, a Procter & Gamble toothpaste, and I can tell you right now, I'll never use that stuff. It's got so many like dyes and colorants and whatever it has in it. Blue Lake number something, which is aluminum in your mouth. Alcohol. They put some of them have potassium nitrate. Isn't that saltpeter nitrates? Is, isn't that carcinogenic? Very questionable products. They're, Procter & Gamble is all about wrapping something in plastic, putting perfumes on it. You use it as deodorant or whatever, aluminum and perfumes on your body. Okay, uh, let me give you an example of what a worthless company I think that is. A lot of women have asked me, how do I have such beautiful flowing hair? You know, like George Costanza, he was asking, he wants a woman with beautiful flowing hair. They've asked me, how, how come my hair is so soft? What do I use? Do I use some product? Do I use some special thing? You know what I use? I'm still a dude. I use a bar of soap half the time. Most of the time, I'd say it's a natural soap. So you don't need... Procter & Gamble in your life. Do you really need Mars Bar in your life? I look at the ingredients. It's like hydrogenized palm oil or something, sugar and glucose. Is that going to make your life better? Philip Morris. Philip Morris, don't they make something really bad? Pepsi. Pepsi was there and they're still there. Now they're saying, you know, oh, we're operating dairy farms and things. There's significant taxes they're paying to Moscow. Okay. That is definitely not king. Good. What about Burger King? It, it could be called Burger Czar. I, I was driving by uh, Burger King the other day here in Eastern Europe, and the kids were hungry. Regardless, I didn't go there. 
okay? We went to McDonald's down the street, much better. I mean, isn't Burger King like Burger Czar? I can't believe they haven't left. Don't they char it? Isn't charred meat carcinogenic? Okay, there's there's endless amount of these companies, but every single one I would not shop at. Okay, Whole Foods, do they have a presence there? No. Why? Because they follow conscious capitalism. What about Ikea? Ikea, the Swedish furniture store. From my understanding, they pretty much uh, one of the first companies to leave. Same with Disney and a lot of these like ethical good companies. I don't know if they're you know think they're good or not, but I shop, you know, at Ikea. I shop at Whole Foods, and I'm only going to shop at companies that don't do business in Russia, or that some ethically. I mean, United Colors of Benton or something, whatever they're called. They're supposed to be this we are the world. And yet, from my understanding, they were there until they had to leave. I don't know if they're still there. There's some websites you can check. Over a thousand companies still doing business in Russia one way or another, weaving it through. So you have to ask yourself, what you know, in this earth, what is this life about? Do you want to be supporting that directly or indirectly? And maybe my dollar doesn't count because I'm just, you know, a speck of dust floating through this universe. But you know, if you see yourself as a speck of dust floating through the universe, that's what the universe is going to give you. But if you see yourself as great, magnificent, unlimited, spiritual being even, great things will come to your life. So start with making conscious choices about, you know, the products that you buy. And you say that these companies, okay, they're not doing anything bad. They're just trying to make a buck. Okay, but, you know, Philip Morris, Nestle's, you know, or Procter & Gamble, I, I mentioned, keep on mentioning. I don't know if those are companies I would want to actually use those products because maybe they're not good for me. So, so is within as so is without. You do good things for yourself, you're doing good things for the world. And you have to think like this because this geopolitical event in Ukraine is too serious and we all have to do our part, even if it's a small part. Maybe the money you save by not buying, let's say, you know, Burger King or Procter & Gable products, the money you save, you donate to Ukraine. And we will somehow, one of us will think of a way to segue from my last video, an unconventional, divergent way. Maybe there's some divergent out there that will think of a way to bring this Russian down, this Russia down. And I, I'm telling you, I have loads of ideas, but I'm not going to articulate them here. So conscious capitalism, don't buy products from unethical companies. You've got companies like Google. Okay, maybe they're still doing business, but that's a, in Russia, but that's for a particular reason. They have this algorithm where they're trying to, I believe, you know, curtail this extremism in Russia. Yandex, the Russian company set up by a, a smart Russian guy, he basically was forced to sell his search engine, it's the Google of Russia, to Moscow so they can, like, you know, pump propaganda and then he reestablished it as an AI company in the Netherlands because he protested this, this Moscow. So, again, when you're evaluating companies, you have to understand what's going on and why they're doing it and what the situation is. But generally, you can look at a list of companies and see the bad ones, and they are bad. And I'm just going to support the good and the light. And will it do any good? Doesn't matter. My name is, but I think it will. And again, just to end this on a positive note, I have information. I have things. Ukraine will win. Russia will lose decisively. My name is Mark Birnod. I'm a monetary economist. Have a great day. Thank you very much.